Hey there, it's Clint again, and we have a discourse user trying to use the Docker Compose quick start in a host it anywhere fashion. This required some changes to the Docker Compose quick start, and those have been applied, as well as the simplified Docker Compose quick start. So you can go on out to discourse at this link shown and follow the conversation. You can get the commands there too, and I think I'll put them into the video description, but let's just get right into it. So. What we're trying to accomplish, in fact, if we go to the discourse and look at what we are trying to accomplish, we're trying to accomplish this right here. We're trying to have a web browser on our client, an overlay network that traverses the underlay network, where we'll have a quick start deployed out, in this case, Amazon, with one edge router. And that one edge router will then continue on to some web server. And in this case, it's 172.31.50.50 and we'll deliver some HTTP content. In this case, it'll be the Docker whale. And let's go ahead and see that actually happen. The first thing we need to do is actually, if we go out to the quick start and we look at the content, we'll see I'm going to obtain the Docker environment. So I'll use these two curl statements to do that. So I'll, on the top left, I'm on the virtual machine that has the quick start. On the top right is where I will SSH to the 172.31.50.50 server. And so let's go ahead and obtain those two files. So I've done that. Next thing it does is it says, go ahead and edit the M file. If we look at the M file, you'll see there is an advertised address. We're gonna wanna change that. These are the values that I used. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the entire value set. And in here, I'm going to delete everything. And then just insert my values. I'm not overriding the IP address. I am overriding the controller host name so that it is externally accessible. So I've done that. Now I need to start Docker. It's that simple. So let's, I do not want to respond. I do want to copy. So let's copy this. Docker compose down. Make sure we're not cheating in any way. Seems like something was running. We'll stop that. And we'll go get the up command as well. So we'll wait for this to, uh, to stop. It should be relatively quick. Anytime now, I'm sure of it. All right, now we'll start it back up using Docker Compose. I'm gonna name the Compose project so that it has a predictable name. That way, when I copy from the Docker container in one of the next steps, which you'll see, it'll make all sense. <clears throat> so if we take a look at that, the next thing it says, if if you need the ZDCLI, go ahead and run the get command. And I'm going to do that in this window while Docker Compose starts. So what this will do is it'll go out and it'll get the latest version. It'll unzip it into a predictable location. And since I passed the yes parameter, it will add the uh, path, the ZDCLI to my quick to my path. So I can type the word ZD and it shows up. Great. Now I can see the Docker Compose environment has already started. So let's go ahead and run these commands, which are going to copy from the environment variable that are the environment file, which the compose file creates, the quick start creates, into some predictable locations. And then we're gonna have, go ahead and, and log in. So let's go ahead and do those things. In this one, no, I'm not gonna use it anymore. It's gonna be running compose and I ran it interactively. So control C will stop the process. So I'm gonna run that up here in this window. So let's go ahead and get those values, put them into a file, source the file, and then log in. If everything succeeds, you'll see I get a token and you'll see that it said saving my identity. So great. You could also see that an incoming connection came in and we ignored the bad certificate. We did not provide a certificate since we're logging in. So we can prove that we're logging into that environment. Excellent. Come back to the instructions. Now we're going to create a private web service. And you'll remember, I'm gonna use this IP address. So I should be able to curl to HTTP colon slash slash. And this happens every time because the, the Docker container is running and failing for me. But you can see when I run it again, boom, it pops up the Docker container the, or the Docker whale. So let's go ahead and enable that. We're gonna set a, a variable called service. We're gonna set a variable called private web server. We're gonna make two configs, an intercept config, a host config. We're gonna make a service. Then we're gonna make a couple of service policies. And finally, we'll create a user, an AWS Docker Clint, which we will 
which will create a JWT file that we'll pull down and use inside of our ZD desktop edge, in this case, my case, Windows. Here's my ZD desktop edge for Windows. So let's go ahead and use uh, SCP to, let's see, what directory am I in? I'm in the root directory, that can tell. So we can SCP from the Amazon machine, uh, AWS JWT to here. And that's in C colon backslash temp discourse slash 963. So now let's go ahead and flop over to our ZD desktop edge for Windows. Click add identity. AWS Docker Clint is there. Click the button. You'll see AWS Docker Clint comes up. You'll see it says it has one private dot web service. So now we should be able to do a curl to HTTP colon slash slash private dot web. Connection refused, connection refused. We're having problems dialing our fabric because no terminators. Oh, yes, I have skipped a step. Number seven, very important. I did not authorize my edge router to be a binder. So I got the no terminators. Let's go ahead and run this command out here and then we'll wait for the fabric and the routers to update. It takes about five, 10 seconds. So here it goes. Now we'll see create a terminator. Now, when I curl here from my Windows machine, this is my Windows machine. So you can see curl to private.web gets me the Docker whale. And that's it. Takes you from soup to nuts using the simplified Docker compose file, which you can pull down using these curl statements, follow this link, and you too could have an OpenZD overlay network running in Docker that quickly, and then ha expose some private workload. Ciao for now.